Hi guys, this is our lecture on electric fields and capacitors. Let's get started. All right, so we built the first capacitor in class. This is the Leiden jar. What is a capacitor? It's a device used to store electric charge. It consists of one or more pairs of conductors separated by an insulator. We said that in the past, uh, our ancient scientists, well, in the 1700s, uh, tried to catch lightning in a bottle, and they tried to catch it in a bottle that had a conductor on the outside and an a conductor on the inside, two metal plates, separated by an insulator. And so what we saw was we had the buildup of negative electrons or electrons on the top plate of our Leiden jar, our capacitor. And as a result, those went ahead and they pushed on the electrons that were on the other plate, and those electrons went away to the large neutral object. We connected it to the ground. And so in the creation of a net positive plate and a net negative plate, just like in a battery, we have our first energy storage. There's a whole lot of electrons here that don't want to be near each other. And there's not very many over here, leaving a net positive. And these electrons want to move over to this side, but they can't because we have a big insulator in between. And so the question becomes, how is it, or why is it that the capacitor, why did we have the electrons over here decide to move away, All right? And the electric field gives us its answer. What lets a capacitor store charge. All right, before we move on, let's just see a capacitor being charged in a good illustration. Okay, so we saw if we added more electrons to one side, the other side became more and more positively charged as the electrons on the other side repelled. And so we get a build, big buildup of negative charge on one side and a big buildup of positive charge on the other. All right, and so to explain how this occurs, we use what we call force fields. And I remember being a younger student of physics and being really sort of disappointed by force fields because I played Halo and I was like, oh man, force fields, that must be so cool. You can protect your spaceship from incoming projectiles. You can save yourself from grenades. Oh man, it's already burst your guys' bubble, but it turns out force fields are just visualization tools. Yikes. All right. In particular, visualization tools of non-contact forces such as gravity and electrical force. And so what we do with what we've done in the past when we describe gravity, we said the satellite here is attracted to the planet Earth. We have the force of gravity we call FG and the Earth is attracted to the to the satellite, which we call the moon, FG, just like that. And here we have a proton. It experiences the electrical force upwards from the electron, and the electron is being pulled downwards. And so we drew forces with arrows all of last semester. This is taking it a step further. What if we have an electron that's way out here? Or maybe it's way down here, way down here, way down here, way over here. What forces would it experience, right? Let's find out. So just like we did in the past when we drew arrows to represent our forces, we do the exact same thing. And again, it's like, what are we getting to with this? Well, one of the purposes, one of the things we're trying to get to is an explanation of, one, why capacitors store electric charge, but two, have you ever wondered why it's safe to be inside of a car during a lightning storm? Or maybe why your microwave cooks your chicken but doesn't cook you when you stand in front of it watching it, right? Electric fields, force fields can help us explain that. All right, and so we draw this non-contact force with our force fields, all right? We draw our convention is outwards from positives, and inwards towards negatives, all right, Radio, radially, so around the entire charge, okay? So if we were to look at our capacitor, we'd say we have positive, we have arrows coming out from the positive plate towards the negative plate, all right? And personally, I find this a tiny bit frustrating, but we know why we draw the arrows outwards from our positive and inwards toward our negatives, because it comes from our convention set up by our friend Benjamin Franklin, who said that what moves in an electric circuit in electricity is the positive charge, not the negative. And he got that backwards. But we stick with his convention because, you know, it came from our historical understanding of science. So we deal with, when we talk about electric force fields, aka electric fields, what we're just showing is the direction that a positive test charge would experience if it were put near a charged object. So here we have a Van de Graaff generator. We saw one of these on Friday. And through friction, it builds up a negative charge along its surface. And if we were to draw the electric force field around it, we'd say that the arrow is biggest near the surface, okay? And it gets smaller the further out you go because just like the force of gravity, which depends on distance and mass, the electrical force depends on the quantity of charge and how far you are. So if you were to get, you put a light bulb near a Van de Graaff generator, which we'll have a chance to do in the future, and if we put it further away from the Van de Graaff generator, from the negative charge, well, the electric field tells us that we draw it smaller and smaller going away, that it should decrease in magnitude, right? And our light bulb will get brighter the closer we are and less bright the further away it is, okay? Let's do some practice. So here we have some electric fields as a result of 
charged particles. Outwards from positives or how we draw our electric field inwards towards negatives. So go ahead and try these two. Draw the outwards arrows from our positives inwards towards negative. Give it an attempt. Okay, it should look something like this. Outwards from positives. And we think to ourselves, okay, well, what about in between these two? Well, they don't like each other, so our electric field lines actually look something like this. All right, over here, it's a little bit more straightforward because we know positives attract to negative. We draw inwards towards negatives. Again, why? Because our convention is to have it be for a positive test charge. Our friend Benjamin Franklin thought that the positives in our atoms moved around. Right, we know that's not true. It's the negatives, the electrons. Okay, here we're going to draw the direction a test charge would go if in the following electric fields. Well, let's draw the electric field first. All right, this is the direction that a po positive test charge would go. Okay, our electric fields look like this. Outwards from positives, inwards towards negatives. Okay, and so now for you to try, go ahead and draw. Now that we have clearly our test charges in electric fields, go ahead and draw the direction that you think they would go. Okay. Here it would, draw to, it would go to the right, which we see with the electric field lines. Here our test charge also go to the right. Here our test charge to the right as well. We're following the direction of the blue lines. And here our test charge to the left and to the right. So this one actually goes nowhere. Okay. We take this a step further. We have conductors versus insulators. Once we had our first energy storage device, we could test to see whether or not things were conductors versus insulators because we have a big zap. And so our ancient scientists found out that conductors allow electrons to move easily and poorly in insulators. Good conductors are metals, and good insulators are rubber glass. Let's see a quick demo. All right, one last application of this is something called electric shielding. Why is it safe to be in a car during an electric storm? Or if you're like this person in a metal cage, the answer is because electrons like to spread out. And if we take our idea of electric field showing the direction that test charges will move, and so we surround our test charge on all sides by negative plates, okay, now we make it continuous negative, we can see that the electric field lines are going to start to cancel each other out. And so what happens is if you surround yourself with, say, a big metal object, they get zapped by electricity. The electrons spread, spread themselves out as much as possible. And after they spread themselves out as much as possible, we can see, just like a game of tug of war, arrows that are pointing in opposite directions subtract, and they cancel each other out. And so anytime you're completely surrounded by metal, the electrons, when they hit that surface, will spread out, and their electric field lines cancel, and we have no net electrical field on the inside. And so no bolts of electricity will ever go through a enclosed metal surface. And we use that to great effect, keep us safe in electrical storms. We keep our data safe in computers by surrounding the metal. We keep our wires safe by surrounding them in a coat of a metal sleeve. And this person here can stay safe. All right, that's it for now. We saw Leiden jars first capacitors. Um, we show non-contact forces with electric force fields, just a visualization tool. And we can see based on the distribution of electrons in metal boxes that are, we have electric shielding. All right, that's it for now.